A new shot in the fight against RSV. A lightning fast comeback from Shakari Richardson. And the voice behind Mario is stepping down. That's some of what we'll get to on The 7 from The Washington Post. I'm Jeff Pierre. It's Tuesday, August 22nd. Let's get you caught up with today's seven stories. Number one, around 850 people are still listed as missing from the Maui wildfires. Officials said about 85% of the disaster area had been searched as of Sunday. The death toll from this month's fires stands at 115, but it's expected to rise. President Biden visited the devastated town of Lahaina yesterday to survey the damage. He had been criticized for not saying more about the crisis in its first few days. Yesterday, he told residents that his government will support them for as long as it takes. Number two. Donald Trump's bond was set at $200,000 in the Georgia election case. The agreement was approved by a judge yesterday. It sets strict rules for the former president's release. He was told to not intimidate any witnesses or co-defendants. Trump said he plans to surrender in Atlanta on Thursday. He faces charges that he and 18 allies conspired to try to overturn his 2020 election loss in Georgia. Number three. Tropical storm Hillary led to flooding, but no reported deaths in California. The storm drenched the southwest before it faded yesterday. It caused power outages, school closures, and disrupted air travel. It also broke records. The city of Palmdale, north of Los Angeles, picked up half its average yearly rainfall in a single day on Sunday. After the rains, California is now entirely drought-free for the first time in years. But the storm has left some dangers in its wake. There's still a risk of mudslides, and officials warned residents not to touch, drink, or swim in contaminated floodwaters. Number four, a British nurse who killed seven babies was sentenced to life in prison. Lucy Letby was a nurse on a neonatal ward in Chester, England. Her job was to care for the most vulnerable newborns. Instead, she used her position to commit the horrific murders between 2015 and 2016. She also attempted to kill six other babies. The 33-year-old is the worst child serial killer in modern British history. She was sentenced yesterday to a whole life term, a rarity in Britain. It means she will never be released. The judge, James Goss, addressed Letby, who was not present at the sentencing. There was a deep malevolence bordering on sadism in your actions. During the course of this trial, you have coldly denied any responsibility for your wrongdoing and sought to attribute some fault to others. You have no remorse. There are no mitigating factors. The UK government will lead an inquiry into how Letby was able to continue working, even after colleagues raised the alarm about the suspicious deaths. Number five, the FDA approved a new shot to protect infants from RSV. The new shot was approved yesterday. It's given to pregnant people in their third trimester to pass immunity to their babies. In a trial, it was found to be 82% effective at protecting infants from severe illness in the first three months of their lives. There were no major safety concerns. It's yet another advance in the fight against the virus, which is the top cause of hospitalization in young children. The new shot won't be available until it's officially recommended by the CDC. Number six. Women's 100 World Final. The Jamaicans get out well. It's Sharika Jackson, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price, Talu. Here comes Shakari Richardson. Shakari's done. Shakari Richardson won the 100-meter world championship yesterday. Richardson defeated two Jamaican rivals in Budapest, crossing the finish line in 10.65 seconds. It was the fastest race of her life and a championship record. Only four women have ever topped that time. The charismatic sprinter has had a tumultuous three years. She missed the Tokyo Olympics after testing positive for marijuana and struggled to find her footing after returning to competition. But now, she's the fastest woman in the world. 
And at number seven, the voice actor behind Mario is stepping down after 27 years. Over the decades, Charles Martinet's excited yelps have become a feature of the Mushroom Kingdom. His cry of, it's a me, Mario, has become a beloved catchphrase since his breakout performance in Super Mario 64 in 1996. Nintendo said yesterday that the 67-year-old is moving into a new role as a Mario ambassador. Instead of voicing the character, he'll travel the world sharing the joy of Mario with fans. The news sparked an outpouring of appreciation. Many people thanked him for being the voice of their childhoods. Good luck on your next adventure, Charles. That's the show for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to The 7. And if you're feeling extra kind and you listen on Apple, you can write the show a review. I'm Jeff Pierre, and I will meet you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.